Hey guys, what's up? Sorry for the smoke. <laughs> so, welcome to the C Sharp live stream. It's gonna be awesome. So, you might have know that I've been working on this scene for a while now. Uh, on Friday nights, mostly, I would just look at uh, making things look pretty. And now we're gonna add a little bit more in the terms of uh, programming. So what I want to do is I want to have like enemy patrol in a certain area by using waypoints. And when we get into his like trigger zone, there be the actually starts chasing the player. And after like five seconds of chasing, I want to have this leash that it goes back to patrol state again. So let's just first start. Let's just get him to first like walk around a little bit. So let's get him to patrol, and then we're gonna expand on that by using a little bit more. And also want to focus on making a cell manager. So the reason why for that is like uh, I'd like to have one uh, object doing one thing, for example, one object playing sounds, for example, because um, that's just um, it's a little bit safer in my opinion. So it's a little bit easier to, to debug that you don't spend like half an hour like what the fuck is playing. So one object doing one thing, for example, just playing music or playing sound, whatever. So let's just first do the actual AI, AI quotation mark of course. So this is my enemy. To build the enemy over here, I'm gonna make it red actually, make it a little bit more. A bit more exciting to look. Ooh, I'll just make it shiny, shiny. This is my enemy, right? And I want to have him like walk around and see him in a certain path that I actually define. Hello. So the way to do that, right, is using what we call um, waypoints, which is nothing more than a position in in your level that it will actually walk to. And once it's it's met that point, right, then it moves on to the next one. And in the end, it goes just goes all the way back into like a loop, right? So it just loops around the entire scene. So I'm gonna call this bad boy my enemy. Uh, enemy, beautiful enemy, and then I'm gonna actually add my wa um, waypoints over here. So I'm gonna add an empty game object over here because I, I only care about the actual position of the object, nothing else. I don't care about mesh renderer or whatever. The only thing I want to know is its position in space. So I'm gonna call this a uh, waypoint, and I'm gonna set it somewhere else. I'm gonna set it like over here. I'm gonna add, well, actually, let's just do the first like this. So I'm gonna make it a new script. Actually, I'm gonna make a new folder here called enemy. You know, it's a little bit easier. Be organized, you know. So I'll create C sharp script. I'm gonna make my enemy, uh, let's call this uh, enemy, right? Just keep it enemy, that's it. Okay, let's open this. Give it a second to actually compile, there we go. Open Visual Studio, and there it is. So, hope you, hope you guys can read this. Should be big enough. <laughs> if not, then well, that's your own problem, so. Um, so, what I can do, right, I first need to have something in there that I, actually, I can actually uh, put in my waypoints. I'm gonna go for serialized field private uh, game object. I'm actually gonna go for the private transform, a little bit easier. Uh, I'm gonna close waypoint. Now, what does it actually does, right, the um, serialized field means it's actually um, accessible through the inspector, but it's still private, so nothing else can touch it, but we can actually now access this through the actual inspectors a little bit section in my opinion so i'm gonna go to my waypoint my enemy over here and drag it on there see now we've got a transform over here for my waypoint that's it right so first thing that i just want to do is i want to have a move towards it so it's actually quite simple we can just use it here in the update function so i can just say here i'm going to update its position of, of itself uh, and then we can actually do what i call effect three move towards it's literally move towards an object so they get okay from the current one, so that's it, again it's itself position. And okay, where do you want to move to? In this case, I want to move to my waypoint. And then you can set the speed here. And let's say I'm gonna set these like 10 at first, 10 float. And now this case doesn't work because you also need that position here as well. So there you go. Now it's just gonna move move towards that point indefinitely. So effectively move towards means literally move towards that point. Uh, it's current position. And then it's like end point, okay, where do you want to go? And this one is how fast do you, do you actually, actually want to get there. So if I now hit play here, I'm going to dock this over here so you can see what happens. It's just going to... I should not do that. Sorry. Maximize on screen. No idea how fast it's going to be, but well, see, it's, it's, it's already there. That's how fast it actually goes. It's probably like, uh, let's do one, see what happens then. Let's get a uh, kind of speed first. There we go. Still too fast. So let's just make it a little bit easier for ourselves here. I'm gonna make a public uh, float. Speed. 
speed. We can actually check that a little bit easier. Speed. Let's see what's going to be. Uh, probably like 0 0.2 or something like that, you know. Something strange, something small. I guess 0 0.2. Let's see how fast it moves in. Just chilling, you know. Just mo moving towards the actual point. That's it. So I can do it here as well. It's a little bit easier actually as well. So we can also update with time and delta time. So this is like the, the actual current time in game. It's a little bit slower then. See how fast it moves now. Super slow, right? So time to delta time is the actual time in game. So every like 0 0.2 seconds, I think. So now we can start fi figuring out okay how fast I want to move. So to one, to three, four. It's better. See, and it's also now a way smoother. So by uh, multiplying with the delta time, you get a way, way smoother movement as well. So I'm gonna set back to four here. So the thing is, so what I want to do right when he's there, I want him to go to the next point in space. So right now we only have one. So I'm gonna duplicate this bad boy over here and I'm just gonna move it around like somewhere over here. It doesn't, doesn't mean there though. So in this case, right, we need to have a way we can actually put in two waypoints in our actual enemy script. So I'm gonna use a list for that, which I think is actually a little bit nicer. Uh, so I'm gonna turn this into a list, which is nothing more than a uh, fancy form of for an array. So it's like a list of items that we can actually store and we can access. But the thing with a list is that you can actually edit it while uh, running the game, which I kind of actually really like. So you can actually add stuff to the uh, to the list, or you can also just delete stuff from the list. Uh, so I personally prefer lists, uh, but it's just a fancy way of, of uh, making an array which you can edit, right? In this case, though, this doesn't work anymore, right? It's just now I have a list, so I need to have like the candy brackets over here. Like I'll just, I'll just do one here for zero for a second. So the first one in our list access that one get the actual points so i'm gonna add here so now it's gonna turn into a list i'm gonna set size two so now i can just drag in the waypoints and you can add this with like four five six hundred if you want to uh, i'm gonna add like four in the end but first let's do this so again right the way this works is it's just a list you get a um, so you get like object one over here object one then you have an object two and we start counting, counting at zero, so this one is zero, this one is one. So and then you can go through the entire list. And that's what a list does or slash array. It's a, it's, it's a nice easy form for storing multiple objects that you want to use. So right now, right, I set it to zero, so it should go to the first one. So that will be this one. It should move towards that object in space. Let's see if it actually does that. And there it goes. Beautiful. Okay. So right now I can also change it to one. So the second object in the list, again, we start counting from zero. It should move to the one over here, right? So let's have a look. It actually does that. And it's just chilling, you know, it's just moving towards that object right now. Awesome. So, what I want to check, right, is see if the distance between my points is small enough, and if it's if it's small enough, then move on to the next point, right? So what we can do that over here, so I'm gonna add uh, comments over here so it doesn't crash. So we can actually check the distance, through a function that's actually in there by default, which is called the uh, factor three dot distance, <laughs> literally. So you can say factor three dot distance, right? So that's actually the distance between the two points over here. Uh, so we get here over here, so the A and B, factor A and B. In this case, I wanna do my transform position, so my own position, and I wanna use my target position, that will be in this case waypoint. In this case, I'm gonna do zero for this for now, at least. Then okay, if it's small, if it's bigger than Zero, move towards my point in space, right? So if my, oh, top position, sorry. So if the distance between my myself and my target is bigger than zero, move towards it, and if not, nothing else. So I can say here else, for example, else uh, debug.log, beautiful comments. So again, if it's bigger than zero, move towards it. And if it's like zero, then, print out this bad boy thing over here, right? So let's see if this actually works. Well, I kind of know the answer already, but let's see if it actually works. So I'm still moving to the first one. Oh, I should probably add it as well, sorry. Zero, sorry. We're gonna fix it, of course, a little bit, but I just wanna see, I want you to see how this works before I move on. I hit play. There we go. So, and then we get an error message or message over here that says right? The thing is though, um, 
this is kind of dangerous, bigger than zero, uh, since we have to deal with um, a floating point and floating point rounding. I'll show what happens here if I just debug that log, this bad boy, oh, actually debug that log, this one. In this case, I, just, I think I just got lucky, to be honest. Uh, since we have to, have to do all floats here, uh, you, you can get like something like a 0 0.00001 distance, which means it's always bigger than zero. So the, the enemy would never actually get there. See how the actual numbers behave. So you get something like, over here in this case it actually works. But you want to be careful with like going uh, with zero. Because there's a chance you get like this value over here, which means it, it will never actually go to the next state or next waypoint. So I tend to go along in here like something like bigger than one, for example or 0 0.5, whatever, you know, but something that's actually bigger than zero, otherwise you can't get the problem that it just gets stuck, which I don't want, so. Cool, right, and if it's like this, then we'd move on to the next one. So I'm going to add here, move to the next one. Perfect. So we need to make a way where we can actually change this, the value of here to 0 to 1. So I can just add here a private variable. I'm going to add a just an int, int value and let's say it's called current waypoint waypoint so it's zero of course right so so once we get there to this point over here i want it actually to go to the next one so i can go to the one so for example i can change all the values over here from the zero this one here as well so this is the same thing right this this, this still says zero but i just change it into a variable now i can say here uh, plus plus right so this is this is short for equals uh, uh, plus uh, current waypoint, but you know, it's a little bit more of it. It's just fast, right? So plus plus means just add one on top of that. So let's see if this works. So if the distance is greater than 0 0.5, um, go towards it. If it's like in that range, add one to the current waypoint, this means it's going to go to the next one, right? Let's have a look. If it's crossed, it actually works. So let's question. There it goes, right? It goes to the next one, and then it throws us an error, right? Which actually makes sense, right? So we, we check here, right? I mean, our size here is two, right? So zero and one. But what we do here when it actually gets to, to, the, to the second one is that the current, current waypoint will be then become two, right? But it doesn't exist. So it's like, you know, it doesn't exist. I don't know what to do. So what you wanna have when, the, when it gets to like the last waypoint, that the waypoint gets back to zero. So you actually get this loop around again. So then, then it just goes back to the first uh, waypoint. In this case, it's it's zero. So we can do here, right? So we can check to see, okay, if if our, our um, current waypoint is smaller than the amount of waypoints we added in our list, then you can add one. If not, uh, it should be zero again. So I can say here, for example again, so if our current waypoint is smaller than our, uh, what do you call it, waypoint, dot count, since this is in a list, we can use count here. Then do this part over here. Else it should be zero. So it just says right if it's smaller than the count of our list, we can add one because then it's still in, in range. If not, reset it back to zero so it just goes in a full loop, it goes all the way around. Let's see if it actually works. I'll make this one a little bigger soon. Okay, see what happens. It's going. A little bit slow though, but see, and then it goes back to the first one. So now it's just gonna ping pong in between the, the, the two waypoints. Yeah, so this means, right, so if uh, our current waypoint is lower than the, the, the amount of waypoints that we have in our list, um, do this. If not, right, so if, if the um, current waypoint is like equal or well, it's equal to the amount of list we have, then break it so then uh, break the loop and reset it set back to zero so this checks to see i'll just type it just a little bit easier right so if our uh for example i'm going to add zero here uh is smaller than in this case it's two right because we have two items in the list um then do it if not reset it so then we get like something here like so the first one is zero right that's fine so this the second one so this is like number one one then we get a second one here that's gonna be oh value of one, but it will be the second one. So that means that our 
this number over here is not smaller than the amount of waypoints that we have in our list. Therefore, break the loop over here, break this part over here and go to the next one. So it breaks it back to zero. I'll just leave this here. There we go. More than the... Oh, and then if not, uh, reset. Sure, just reset it, go back to zero, so it just goes back and forth, right? But now we only have two, so it's going to just ping pong in between. Uh, so I can add another one over here, I'm going to add one more, I'm going to go back over here, for example. There we go. So in my enemy again, I'm going to add three now. So I'm going to add a third one, I'm going to add this one. So we should now see a nice full loop going around. That's it. Look at him go. See? Now this is again, and then go back to zero again, so it just creates a nice patrol state. But here's the thing though, um, using this I'll show you. This looks okay, right? This looks okay. Problem, the, there's a problem though, when I move my second one over here, my third one, if I move this down, like on into onto the actual ground over here, I'll show what happens. So, still looking good. Everything's okay. Then it's just gonna ignore all the physics. It's just gonna go into the ground, right? Because we tell it like, uh, literally we tell it, okay, go to its position, period. It doesn't care about anything else. It's just like, go there now. It, even though it actually has a collider, but it just gets all overridden because it's it, okay, go there. So this is okay, right? If you don't wanna have anything, anything fancy, but if you want the object to actually follow around your actual terrain, you need to do something else. But it's actually really simple once you know about it, and that's called a, um, a nav mesh. So what it means, it's uh, literally a uh, navigation mesh. In this case, I baked it already though in blue. So this in blue means, oh, that's helpful. So everything in blue means that our agents can walk on. And everything that is not blue means you, that the agents cannot go there, right? So what I'm gonna do here, I'm, I'm gonna turn my enemy here into a nav mesh agent by just adding a nav mesh agent, that's why it's called the nav mesh agent. There you go here. And you can do some things over here, like yeah, how fast are you going to run, how fast can you actually turn around corners, for example, uh, how fast do you accelerate, or you stop at distance, auto braking, the whole shebang that you actually want to do. So by turning into, into nav mesh agent, it will actually add physics to it, and then we'll actually follow around the actual terrain, which is really nice. But we need to do some things to this, so it, does, it does, doesn't work by default, so if I now hit play, of course it's still gonna run, probably. Oh, it actually follows it around already, that's actually kind of cool. And then stops. So it just went there, like, cool, I'll get there, and then nothing, right? So it stops. So we need to do something else in this case. So the first thing I want to do though is I actually need, I need to import those functions from Unity itself. So I can say here using Unity engine.ai, which, which actually accesses, accesses the, accesses the, Jesus Christ, what a word, accesses the, <laughs> Nav mesh functions that we have. So um, I, fr I first need to get my agent. So I'm gonna add a private because no one else needs to know about this. Nav mesh agent, I'm gonna call this agent. So and reason again why I'm, I call this private because no one, nothing else needs to know about my agent. So that's why I'm gonna keep it private. So only my class knows about the agent. No one else, because it doesn't really matter. So what you're saying here, okay, it's gonna exist, that's, that's not good enough. So we also need to get it as well. So in my start here, I'm gonna say agent is okay, component, and in this case, nav mesh agent. That's it. So this just links them together, right? So they link, the, they link the, the, our script file with our actual component called nav mesh, nav mesh agent. So they're now linked, so they know about their, uh, about their existence. Or well, at least my script knows about the existence. But the cool thing about this is actually really simple. I can now say, okay, cool. So. Oh, I'm gonna go up here. My agent has a thing called a destination. I can say, okay, cool. In this case, I can say waypoint dot current waypoint dot position. Done. Right. So the agents actually have a des destination set for them, and the only thing you have to feed it is a um, position in space. In this case, a factor three in space, and it's, and it's just gonna gonna walk. It's just gonna walk around, chill. In theory, 
Oh, where is it? Oh, I lost it. No. Where are you? There you are. I think it's stuck. Did I just make it stuck? I think I made it stuck. Oh. See? See how it actually falls around the actual thing over here? I can move all the way, all the way around. It's just gonna actually follow the entire, entire terrain around. See? How it actually behaves. It's so cool. That makes it actually really cool stuff to, to actually play with this. If I move it again, I'm just gonna move it somewhere else in this case. See how it actually tries to dodge objects? Because we told them to, literally. Gonna make it a little more difficult here. I'm gonna move it all the way around, like here, probably. See how it just go, actually goes around the building to something else. Awesome. That's actually really cool. So you just set the waypoint over here, create a waypoint, and then we just, you know, plus plus. It's actually really nice. I'm just checking out though why it actually doesn't update for some reason. Uh, that's just how it rolls. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you a trick as well. It's actually really helpful for debugging. Is you can actually set your um, inspector here to debug over here. It shows everything in your script as well. Everything. In this case, you see over here, right? You can see the current current waypoint. Things are hidden, become visible. Then so I can actually have a look, see what actually happens. And we're off. Current waypoint is zero. See, it doesn't update it over here. See, it's probably because of my distance that I added over here. So I'm gonna make it a little bigger. Let's do one. That's what I meant when. There's a chance you can get stuck when the value is too small. You can actually get stuck. It's really annoying. Ah, there you are. Let's have a look. It's still stuck for some reason. The demo effect, of course. Nice. Just gonna quickly debug this. The beautiful demo effect, so annoying. Hmm. Let's have a look. Ah, see? Now it, it just gets stuck, right? Because my, because my, my value is, is too small. That's why I so like, be careful with the small values. I'm not gonna say way bigger, like I'm gonna go for like two. Fuck it, let's go. See if this actually works. There you go, see, now it actually goes. So be careful with small values. The cool thing about it as well is so it actually makes this, this nice turn, uh, which is really nice. So I kinda like that. So. I think it can stuck here as well, so I'll make it even bigger, like 2.5. So, let's get rid of this as well. There you go. So now it's just, you know, patrolling around, looking uh, pretty and shit. I'm gonna make this one back here again. So, there you go. Next my sound plane, so I can see it in action. And there goes our 40 boy. Running around in circles, literally. Cool. So, wouldn't it be nice though if you actually like uh, chase the player when he gets in, in range? So I'm gonna do that as well. That's, that's my next step. So what I can do here. I can actually I'm gonna set it back to normal. That's all the way back to normal. I'm gonna I'm gonna add a collider over here. I'm gonna sphere collider. So there's a trigger, can make it a lot bigger though. Let's go for, let's do six, all right, six. So in my script then again, I can actually add here the default one, the on trigger enter. And I wanna make sure it's actually it's my player. So if other dot compare tag player. So I don't like um, um, comparing things with names because if, if, if someone changes the name, everything breaks. And chasing tags is actually much much more difficult. So that's why I always compare with tags. 
So I'm just make sure that my player also here tag. I'm gonna go. What? There. That's why I make sure that I do tag. So it's my player's tag. So the thing I can do here as well is I can just say in this case like agent dot destination is my other though dot transform dot decision like this. In that case, it will it will just go to my player in theory. Let's have a look. Let's change it. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, doesn't look to do anything. Oh, oh. Doesn't anything, right? Cool. Let's have a quick look what's actually happening here. So if it doesn't work, I have to set the trigger. Double check. Okay, let's just do it over here and just quick debug. Uh, let's have a quick look. Could be that it does, just doesn't get the position, that's also very possible. It does, right? It's just really small. I'm gonna make it a lot bigger then. <laughs> this this should be big enough, I suppose. Just got a little one. Okay. Um, what's it as well? Be careful with uh, debox, uh, especially if you leave them, because they're very uh, CPU intensive. So you can set the destination by chasing stuff in here, right? Um, but again, this this gets overwritten. So this happens, right? And then it actually gets overwritten again. So I can check it here. So I'm gonna add here debug.log. Because again, right, this is done every single frame. This every single frame. This happens once. This is one trigger. So I don't need to do something in here to actually do that. So I'm gonna say in here, uh, JSON player. And I'm gonna say here, uh, moving towards point. There we go. Let's hit play. So it's it's moving towards the point. Chasing player. Just you know. Just it just completely ignores me because it, again it just over overwrites it so this will actually overwrite our current uh, destination so we need to do something for that actually to change that so I'll show you again over here so move towards point move towards point I'm gonna actually actually trigger it it, it actually triggered it but then it just keeps on going because it gets overwritten by the update function so we need to have something in here that we can actually like uh, uh, switch states so we call states so I'm gonna make it very simple I'm not gonna make it too difficult. So in an update, right? I want to I want to make sure that if I'm if I'm walking towards something or if I'm chasing my player, so what I can do here, I can create something that we call a actual state machine, uh, ish. So I'm gonna make my enum over here. So enum uh, public, ooh, ooh, I can't type enum, which is just list uh, state. Uh, let's say idle indle patrol chase. And then in here, I'm gonna have my private uh, state, current state, because if it's a caps lock, it's actually true, right? There you go. So, by using a state machine, we can say, okay, if you're chasing, then only chase, if you're idle, to only idle, and if something happens, we can change, like we can actually break out of that system and do something else. So this is actually really nice. So I can make here like an actual, what we call a switch. I'm gonna make a switch here. Don't tap, because I'm lazy. I'm gonna switch on current state. Like this. See, it auto fills it, which is really nice. Then I'm gonna move this into a different function, right? So I'm gonna make a new function over here. Uh, private void uh, patrol. I'm just gonna move this part over here and that function. Boom. It's a little bit more neat, right? Be organized. So, so when my state is patrol, I wanna do patrol. Patrol. That's it, right? And if I'm doing a chase, I'm gonna make a chase here as well. Fight, fight. Uh, chase, it's called chasing. So it's a verb. 
And then I want to set my destination to my player type, right? So I'm gonna make a, I'll do that in, I'll do that in a little bit. In this case, one of the one over here is I want to change my state. So I'm gonna say current state is state dot chase. Gonna close that for a second. So when we now, so if if our if our state is set to patrol, it's just gonna patrol, right? And if we set our uh, state to chasing, to chase it's gonna chase. So now it happens, I'm gonna debug here, debug the log, chase. Let's see what it does now. Probably nothing, because our default point, our default is set to, see now chase is actually updating every single time. So this actually works really well. So my default state should be uh, current state and state dot patrol. I'm gonna do patrol here. So now I can say okay, do patrol first, and then if I if do something else, chase. See, chasing move towards point. It's not chasing. It's not moving towards the point. I'm gonna change it. See, and now you can see my my code over here that my move towards stops. And my chasing actually starts. So this is actually exactly what I want to do. It should be nice. So now I just need to have some way that I can actually store my player at some point. So I can make here like the player here. I mean, I get my player information from over here. I just need to store it somewhere. So I could just make a transform over here, which is a position, right? But I have a transform, let's call it target. You know, it sounds epic. Then I can say here my target um, is the other dot transform dot so I just I just store it in the uh, call the call target. And in here I can say agent destination is target dot position. Sorry, there you go. See how it actually works. See, it's it's now chasing me around. Chasey boy, see it's not chasing. This is perfectly what I want to have. So okay, again, what happens right is we create states that we can actually switch to, which is nothing more than like a boolean, like a fancy version of a boolean. Um, and this is just like a value that we add. So if I'm by default, I'm just gonna say okay, I just want to patrol. So when I, I set my state to patrol, in this case, the state of patrol, it's gonna actually do this function over here. When I say, okay, no, don't change anymore, don't patrol, but I want you to go to chase, then it's gonna execute this function over here. So this is a nice way of being organized in the same file and just have like different behaviors of an object while still being really nice and tight. And chase it over here, right, for example, like that. So I can also like I wanna do, right, yeah, I just wanna set like a leash, like after five seconds it breaks, it just goes back to patrolling, whatever. So I can do here, uh, it's called an I enumerator. Uh, I'm gonna call it leash. Then we need to do what we call a yield return new. We'll wait for seconds. This is default uh, stuff. I'm gonna set it to two at first. So I don't wanna have to wait that long. And after that, I can just set my current state again back to patrol. Then it's just gonna call, go back to patrol. So it, it's it's it should chase me while nothing happens right now, but. When I call this leash function, it will just wait for two seconds and then it's gonna set my state back to patrol, so it's gonna go back. So I'm gonna do it over here. Um, you have to do what we call a start a coroutine uh, leash. That's it. So this is, this calls it and puts it on a different like thread, different uh, different line, but this will just execute on the side and then it should work. I hope. After two seconds, it should leash back. Chasing me, chasing me, chasing me, and it's gonna go back. See? Not just. Let's do it again. Oh, chasing me again. Oh, and it's just gonna move back. So this is this is not a nice way of you know creating like this AI behavior, even though it's not at all. But it just looks really fancy with 95 lines of code. You can create like an AI behavior. By just using a very simple so like state or booleans, like we just check to see, okay, what are you doing? Are you patrolling? Oh, I could, I, I just got hit by a player, or I should probably chase him. Call the chase function, 
And after, after, after two seconds you're tired, so then you're gonna go back to patrolling again. That's that's pretty much all it's, all it's doing right now. So, and it's called here on the on trigger enter, you set the state, like hey, wake up, to actually chase the player. Um, and then we call this function over here, like like while it's doing, it's gonna call this function over here. Like wait for two seconds, then because you, you're so tired, go back to patrolling, cause you know, fuck that guy, you don't, you don't care about him. Very simple behavior, but it's actually worked really well. So, and a switch is just a nice way of saying it, like, hey, if um, um, current state equals idle, do this. If current state uh, equals patrol, it's just a little bit sexier. It's actually, do it like this. So this is, this works really well. This is this is what Primus Squad's called call a fire state machine. At super easy level. Uh, this is something that everybody can do once you get the logic behind it. Uh, but it's fun to do. So, next step I want to do is I want to create like a sound manager. So. Uh, the thing about this is what uh, what I like about this again um, is that you give um, one option or one object the um, um, responsibility to do something, right? Just one thing, like yeah, you're only here to play sounds. You're only here to update my UI. You're only here to manage our our AI. How many enemies are there? So one thing, one task, for one script alone, right? And nothing else can do that. So it's really nice and um, saves your behavior. Yeah, it yeah, also works well. Yeah, yeah, that's actually yeah, it works the same. But this case is this case is just time based. In that case, what, what you're saying, shin guards, it just means that yeah, if the player is faster than the actual enemy, it just go back. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, exactly. Good one actually. Yeah, also add over here as well. Good one. On trigger exit. Again, you want to make sure that's player though. So if uh, that it's that it's not some bush that actually triggers it. So that will be kind of awkward. And then you can say here as well. So the state will be current state equals state dot patrol. Same thing, good one. Yeah, same thing, exact same thing. This is based on time, and this one is based on the actual trigger exit. Nice. Cool. So let's make a uh, folder again. Let's call it mo oh, button. Sorry. Let's call it a manager folder because that's always sexy. Gonna make a sound manager. So again, this this guy's function is only to play sounds, and that's it. Nothing else. Only play sounds. Period. So I'm gonna make a new MG object over here. I'm gonna call this my sound manager. I'm gonna drag it on there. There you go. Yep, I only have one. I'm so sorry. I did it in lab. I'm just gonna hit delete. There you go. Okay. There you go. So the thing what I, I want to use is what we call a pattern, a, a program pattern. It's called a singleton, uh, which means that that object is accessible by everything in the scene. And it's actually really nice. But there's like a single point entry to it. It's really nice. So everything in our in our scene can actually call that specific thing. <laughs> no worries, thank you. So it's just it's a nice way of, of of accessing through one single point, and then you can do all function there. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll call a public static sound manager instance so this means that the public static means that you can access it from somewhere else like every single script can access this file now if i do it properly every single thing so what i'm going to do is on awake from awake uh, so that's the first thing to execute i'm going to check to see hey if my instance is not null um, destroy it because because there can be only one literally there can only be one there can only be one sound manager uh, else uh, instance is this. Uh, this is super common. This um, a, a, a single pattern is really common. Uh, it's used a lot by everybody. So if you want, you can also add here. It's called a don't destroy on load, but I'm not gonna do that for now. Yeah. So this is what this is what we call a single pattern. So now, for example, in my enemy script, right, I can actually call this. If I put this on my, it's already in here. Yep. Wow. I don't know what's happening over there, but sure. Let's fix it. So there you go. So my enemy script here can actually call my sound manager. I'm gonna call. I'm just gonna do some over here, for example. So you get sound manager. See dot instance dot function that, that, that you want to add. So it's a very nice way of um, having one thing of giving um, one object one thing to do. In this case, that will be playing sounds 
So actually, in order to play sounds, we need a couple of things here. So we need to have the actual audio source component here. Audio source. Source, that one. And all my objects, I want to add the clip. So, and, and, and the only thing you can play audio is by through audio source. And by only adding a clip to an object, you can only, okay, I, I want to play this sound, but my manager is actually going to play that sound for me. So if every kind of want to do here is for like my enemy over here, oh enemy over here. Um, every time it actually hits a waypoint, I, I want it to play sound. It's going to be stupid, but it's also going to be hilarious. So just, just like actual <laughs> more like uh, feedback, you know. I'm going to add an audio clip here, right? So this is a clip, 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 clip. If I can find it again, audio. Wow, I can't type. Wow, clip. Am I being that stupid? I probably am that stupid. Source. No. That works as well. Strange. So, I'm gonna have a clip here. I'm gonna go for my warp sound. It's this one. <laughs> Always works, right? So, and this is the one that's actually gonna play it, right? So, my enemy. It's only there for like picking which ones I use. Um, I personally prefer uh, using F mod. It's a little bit uh, easier, but yeah, that's the way it is. You can't help it, so okay. So this way, I want to put my like slot for my sound. That's it. What I can actually do here is a little bit easier. Actually, I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna make it a little bit sexier, even sexier. So I can add a script here in my enemy. So I can add here a. Show audio clip. clip clippy. So again, this one gives us an option to select it, even though it's still private, so nothing else can touch it. But we can like sneakily around actually get something from it. So enemy script here. Now I can audio clip. There you go. So this is just a container for my clip that I can send to my manager, like hey, play this song for me, okay? So in my manager here, I can make a function that's called public void play sound. And in my sound, I need a audio clip, of course, otherwise I can't actually load it. So clip, there you go. So before I get though, I need to do this first. So uh, oh, I should probably define my audio source in here. So I also can actually access that. Audio source. Audio source. Again, I need to like link right, my my sound manager script to my component in this case, otherwise they don't they, they can't talk to each other. Again, by saying get component, you actually get that component linking to, to each other, and then we can actually do this. In this case, I want to do here is uh, my audio source. Our clip is clip. Then I want to say play. Play. That's it. Play. See it actually works. I'm not gonna work because I don't play my actual sound over here, so I need to do it here. So if my patrol in here, right? So if I better move to one to the next point in space, I need to play the sound. I can say here sound manager dot instance play sound clippy. And clippy is my sound, my own clip that I added over here. So I'm I'm just passing my clip to that function in my sound manager singleton that's gonna play my sound. That's it. Probably gonna be stupid as hell, but yeah. It's getting there. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, but it's actually worked really well, right? So, so we have again one uh, one class, uh, one object in my scene has the. Um, um, sole purpose of playing sounds. That's it. Uh, again, so you save a lot of trouble. Like, hey, which which object is playing sound? It's really annoying. I, I had one scene from a student years ago that had like twenty four like audio sources all playing audio, and then it's like, which one is actually playing? It's really really tedious. So, uh, okay. So what though? If I want to have three D sound, right? So right now my default my sound manager is only playing two D sounds. My my spatial blend is zero, so. What do I do when I want to play a 3D sound? So let's get dirty. 
So what we can do first is we have a thing, a thing called a function override or overload. You want to depends on what you call it, which is the same function, right? Play sound, but with an extra argument. In this case, I want to use the audio clip again, and then I also want to add the transform, so like the position of something, right? See, this is okay, right? So you can have same function names as long as you add something in there. Oh, this should be clip, sorry. This is called uh, function overload or override. I, I think I think we're being taught overload. Uh, so I'm gonna paste it over here. Same thing, right? But then I need to do here is the audio source dot. Oh, was it again? And I also get no special mode. This one it says you're right. So if it's zero. It's 2D. If it's one, it's 3D. But we still we still need to like actually play it in space somewhere. So by default, if we leave to this, the actual location of a sound manager will be the origin of the sound, which is kind of stupid. So what I can't do though, it's a little bit dirty. So please, don't know if there if there are any uh, engineers watching, but I'll just I'll just move my entire sound manager object. There we go. So I'm just I'm just gonna move my entire object to that location space. Because uh, it doesn't doesn't really matter where it is if it's 2D sound. In this case, I'm just gonna move it. So now I can do here is play sound. But in this case, I'm gonna add my transform. My only my my own transform. In this case, I can say this here, make it a little more clear. This. Oh, I should probably add a dot, not a comma. There you go. So in this case, where the difference is, this is a, a overload, but this one actually has a 3D sound effect. So I say it to 3D. See if it actually works. I should not hear it that clear anymore when I get close. Let's get in there. It is playing. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's not actually. It's a feel sound. It's beautiful. Probably make it a little bigger, but so again, right? What I'm doing here, I have two two the same functions, right? But one of them has a different type of argument, like an extra argument. So that's that, that's how, that's how you can have two the same functions. It's really nice though because when you call this in code, it's still the same function, but you can just add an extra an, an extra argument or an extra overload. Yeah, it's actually really nice nice way of doing it. So you can see it all in my auto complete. Don't know if you can see it, but it says audio clip transform t plus one overload. Which means that it's this function over here. It's actually a really nice way of doing the same thing, um, but slightly different. Because uh, otherwise, what you'll get, right, if you can't do it like this, you have, to have a different uh, function over here, probably like play sound 3D. You know, it kind of gets annoying, gets confusing. Uh, it's not really sexy, so this is, you know, making it sexy. So, so this is what I call a singleton pattern. It's really nice, it's really common. Uh, just don't overuse this. Um, I've seen like 100 or 100 singletons in one scene because you know it would be helpful to actually track the player location or whatever, right? Don't do that. Um, so this is like uh, alcohol, you know. Don't overdo this because then every engineer on this planet will be angry at you, which is not something you want because they can be mean, I've been told. So works really well, right? So. Um, in this case, well, if, if two different things, right? Yeah, okay. Then, then it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little, a little bit different here. Let's let's just try it out. So when I don't know, it's actually a good one. Let's find out. And let's do a thing over here again. So I'm gonna clip clip two. Sorry, programmers. Clip two. Well, if it's if one function is calling this one, it won't actually move, right? Because it's just does, but if this one's been called, um, it's, it it will just jump probably. So let's try it out. So I'm gonna add a different sound effect here. Uh, this one. Yeah, let's do that one. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So let's do this over here. Just 
gonna do it. Uh, where I'm gonna do that? Singleton. Um, how do I? How on earth do I explain that? It's a good one. So a singleton is. Uh, so it's class, right? It's one class. It can only be one of it. Literally, it can only be one of it. Which you gain, which you give access to everything else. By saying here that it's a public static cell manager instance so everything in your scene can call on that class like literally everything doesn't matter if it's the player enemy your scoreboard your ui whatever everything can call that class right so it's very helpful if you want to have something that actually manages your uh high scores or your ui for example right for imagine right what i did for my, my game that i'm working on is that i have a um manager for my ui but which only puts on like messages on screen, right? The only messages on screen. So then I can, for every class I can call like, hey, manager of my UI, put this message on screen, right? But that's only one of, one of them, because it can only be one of those singletons. But it's a very easy way to be organized and have one thing do one specific thing, like managing the UI, managing your sound, for example, or managing your, how many enemies there are there, yeah. That, but that's a really complicated explanation <laughs> so yeah that's actually true uh, but it's just one thing with only one task uh, that there, are, there can only be one of that's a single thing right and the single thing is public for everything so everything can touch it everything can call on it um, for specific things like putting messages on screen or playing a sound effect in this case something like that right so let's do what you just said, I'm just gonna give that a try actually. I don't know what's gonna happen though. Ignore this for a second. Uh, it's just kind of curious what's gonna happen. Oh, doesn't work. I don't know why I call it jump, but keep <laughs> ignore this. I just want to see what's, what's actually going to happen to my sound manager. It just keeps on playing it and it just moves the actual object. Kind of, kind of fun actually. So it, it just moves. It just moves it again. If you call it again, it's, it's, it's just gonna move it again. Makes makes sense though. Makes sense. Cool, 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 cool. The next one, here we go. Awesome. So we have like an AI system. Uh, we have something that can that can play our sounds. Let's make one. Let's do one more thing. That's making a gun. It's always fun, right? Making a gun. So let's make a gun. I'm gonna make a cube. I'm gonna go to my character over here. This is my character. Beautiful character. It's invisible. I'm gonna make a gun though. I'm gonna make a cube. Beautiful cube. Soup. <laughs> In your face, cube. That's that's how we roll here. Beautiful gun. A little bit lower. Oh, there it is. Oh, here. And there you go. This is my gun. It's beautiful. Make it a little bigger. Bigger is better. There we go. Well, I'll, I'll sh uh, no, this is fine. Gun. So, this is my gun, right? How do I make this shoot? So, first thing though, we need to have a bullet. Make a bullet, which I already made for you guys. I made a folder called uh, resources and in there, there I say, bullet. Just a sphere with a rigid body on it, which has, which use, doesn't use the gravity. I can use this though, it doesn't really matter, but the only thing I've added though is a, a rigid body so I can apply physics to it, so I can shoot it forward. That's why we use the actual rigid body for this. So I can add force so I can shoot it around. So I'm gonna make a new script here and I'm gonna go, nim, 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 nim. I'm just gonna call shoot. Shoot. Literally shoot. Oh. I'm gonna make a new one. 
They all already exist. Uh, weapon. That's a cool name for a shooting script. So the first thing I don't want to do. Oh, sorry. Oh, there's, there's, there's actually nothing there, so this is fine. There was nothing there. Oh, actually, oh, maybe I'll show it one more time. Good one, actually. Uh, open prefab. <laughs> there we go. So uh, the only thing I added here was a rigid body. <laughs> actually, I, I, I don't know where to put my webcam, to be honest. Like, where the fuck do I put it? Yeah, maybe. So, but I just added a um, rigid body. You can use gravity, you cannot use gravity, whatever makes you happy. So it doesn't really matter though, so. So, I've got a, got a web script that I'm gonna put on my amazing gun. Gun, again, if, if it caps, it's true, so I'm gonna add my script to this, and there you go. So the first thing I, I wanna catch is when we actually click on the button, on the mouse button, so this input, if input, you know, get mouse, they have three options, right? You have mouse button, mouse button down, mouse button up. Down is when you press it, when you press it down, literally just once. Up is up is when you let it go, and get mouse button is like continuous flow of clicking, right? In this case, I want to only shoot once. I'm gonna use mouse button down. Okay, which which mouse button? I want to use zero, so left mouse button. Okay, so I want to click here. I want to shoot, right? So first, I need to actually get my bullet off here. So I'm gonna make a feel for my bullets I'm gonna have a game object here I'm gonna call it bullet beautiful that's a slot gonna drag it in bullet there you go so what I want to do right now is what we call an uh, instantiate which means that you make an instance of the object so I'm gonna store this into a something that I can actually use again so I'm going to temp or that makes you happy then instantiate, which means okay, and make an instance of it. Okay, from where do you want to go? From what object do you want to actually instantiate? So the first one would be bullet. So I want to instantiate my bullet, please. Okay. The transform would be okay, from where do you want to spawn it, right? From which location do you want to spawn it? I want to spawn it at my current location. So transform. Dot nothing. So from my current position, there. Then they ask for a thing called uh, quaternion, but I'm just gonna. Type your identity. You don't want. You really, really don't want to dive into quaternions. Oh, I think this actually should be a position. Correct. Now I'm gonna say spawn it as a game object. Whoa. Game object. So make an instance of my bullet, spawn it right there, and give magic to it when it comes to quaternions. Don't look at it. But this position. Okay, what do you want to do? Where do you want to put it? So have a look, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna make my game a little bit smaller again. I get my gun, see what happens. Pew! It's falling. I can see it, but it's actually. It's just falling down, right? And then it's just falling down the hill. Beautiful game, I suppose, but yeah, don't really what we wanna do. So, next step will be to actually add force to this so we wanna push it away. So I'm gonna reduce this. I'm gonna say okay temp, right? My game temporary game object and uh, okay component rigid body. And I can say okay add force. Boom. Where do you want to add force to? I want to add force what we call factor three dot forward. So forward. Boom. Force mode doesn't really matter. Scan it though is say multiply this value with a certain amount that I wanted it to go. So I'm gonna say like 10. It's just like giving an extra extra boost, right? Otherwise it will just like fall down. So see what happens, right? Gonna hit play. Exciting. Ah, oh, it's doing a little bit more, but oh not really what we wanna do, right? So let's add a lot more force to this. I'm gonna say thousand. See what happens then. Let's keep in mind that I have gravity turned on. Oh, oh, it's going, but it's going in in the wrong direction. Okay. This is not really helpful at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna what we call an, an origin point. It's a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna add a game object over here, empty. 
which will be nothing more than like point okay from this point on i want to spawn my bullets and i want to go and i wanted to use this ford x ford a little bit easier to do because sometimes you have like a gun like a like a crossbow or like a machine gun right and uh, but the bullets don't spawn in the middle of your gun because that's kind of awkward so i, I, I want to be able to control where they spawn from in this case i want to spawn them from my position over here so i'm going to add it here as well so i'm going to add a I'm just add transform uh, origin, right? So I'll, add, I'll be a nice programmer. Origin, there you go. Origin. Now I want to use my origin as my position. There we go. And my origin as four. Let's see if it actually gets to this. There you go. So I want it to spawn from this location, right? And use the Z, this case it's Ford, I want to use that as a Ford X of my bullet shooting object. See? We're shooting guns. Make it bigger, on screen, a little section. Pew! Beautiful. Okay, so maybe I don't want to want to use gravity. Maybe I just want to make it a little fast. So I'm gonna add like three thousand. Fuck it, let's do this. See how fast it actually goes. That's actually okay. We're shooting balls. Cool thing as well, they also bounce of it. <laughs> Not exactly what I want to have, but you know, it, it actually works. So, thing though, they will, if I it's turn this off here for a second, just watch my hierarchy, right? And it's gonna be awful. So, when I spawn them right, you see that it actually adds a clone of this, like 100 of them. So what you kinda wanna do though, is at some point they die, or they, at least they get destroyed. Otherwise, if you have like a big game and you have like, one billion bullets actually everything will be stored in as a game object and you are seen you don't want that though so i'm gonna add a script called bullet or projectile i'll just, I'll just call it projectile so we, so we can use it for more things than just that and in my projectile one thing i'm gonna do over here is on start oh it's gonna left there i think this is gonna work i'm gonna say destroy Game object and this is here after like oh dot then a timer let's say two seconds two seconds okay I'm gonna add it to my bullet though so I'm gonna go to my bullet click the click open prefab script projectile there we go so let's have a look what happens now after two seconds they should die See, and they're dying. Just is a little bit more efficient, right? So see, now just just look. They're dying. Awesome. So what I can do is now as well, a bullet here as well. So I can say here, I'm gonna go to bullet, or prefab. Maybe I want my enemies to be able to like get hit by my bullet. So I'm gonna add a tag here that's called like projectile. There you go, projectile. And then I can see over here. So I can now check my enemy as well. So in my enemy script here, I can now go to my, I can, I can use my trigger enter here. I can also use my collide, which works as well. Doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna use trigger for now, it's a little bit easier. So I can say, okay, if, my, if my tag is player, oh, else if, you know, under the compare tag is projectile. Destroy. So I'll kill my enemy. So if I get hit by my projectile, kill my enemy. That's what it does. How's that work? If I can actually kill my enemy. Sounds so sad. Oh, I just killed my enemy. Because <laughs> my, 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 my trigger is huge, right? That's why I probably doesn't. So what if I use here, like on collision enter, which is the same thing but just with actual collisions. Oh, 
I can't really type Jesus Christ but I want you that's weird on coalition enter if the transform dot tag okay I'm gonna leave this oh, this is the same thing as trigger but then it just just uses collision like okay, if my collision dot transform dot compare tags projectiles if it's my projectile please destroy me sad probably a little bit harder than I thought but oh oh yeah the sequence not kill <laughs> that's why you don't use gravity but yeah this works same way so now I can kill my enemy you know I can even go here I should, I should let's, let's go nuts here I still have, have 10 minutes left, so let's go nuts here. Uh, enemy. Enemy. Okay. Oh, I still have, I had it open. Christ, I'm stupid. So let's give him health, right? Might as well. Okay, let's go. Let's say. Uh, three health. Oh. Health. I guess three health, right? So every time I get hit. I want to not destroy this bad boy, but you know, I want to check to see. Okay, if um, if my health is greater than zero, health minus minus, so minus one, you know. Else, destroy my can object. Uh, makes sense, yeah. Okay, let's have a look. I'm gonna turn off gravity though, so it's a little bit easier to aim at my enemy. So let's go, bullet, turn off gravity. There we go. I'm missing crosshair. <laughs> this is really difficult. Oh, I think I just clicked it once. I don't know. There we go. That actually worked, right? Bit difficult to see so maybe we can do here um, enemy so um, mm -hmm. equals we could probably say get component mesh renderer material dot Color is color, color dot red. Does this work? Probably not. Color does not concern. Oh. Ah. Yeah, I think. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm gonna open my enemy here. I'm gonna again check my debug mode here. I'm gonna turn off my maximize play so I can see what's happening here again with the debug mode you can see what's like hidden in your inspector it's really nice so keep your eye on bottom right here I'm just gonna go there I can't aim oh it doesn't actually work no. too bad there you go that's cool let's actually turn it into bigger than one actually there you go this doesn't work there you go so if I get hit and my health is bigger than one take one off right so the health can be one else you can kill this object over here and then I'm gonna add a sound here again because that's fun so when my enemy dies here I want to create a new clip death and it sounds really disturbing so I'm gonna make uh, again sound manager she just confirmed about the singletons play sound I want to use 2d sound in this case death Um, yeah, I, I can actually probably show it as well. Give me a second. See, it actually, actually works here. No, don't hear a sound. Too bad. I thought I didn't assign it. Probably. I didn't assign it. Okay. 
How do you limit? How do, would you limit ammo? Well, you just keep track of it, of course. Um, so in this case, my weapon over here. So let's let's have a. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do that, right? So I have seven single ammo count. Okay. Let's make it. I'm gonna give you two bullets, right? Two bullets. Camera, first controller. Set it back to normal. Thank you. Uh, so, it's my wrong. Hey, where's my weapon? Sorry. Got it. Two bullets, right? Okay. So, if my uh, ammo count is bigger than one, I can shoot. Right? And when I shoot, I want to go ammo count minus minus, so I'll take one off. Else, you lock the lock out of ammo. Okay. So two bullets. Uh, I'm I'm out of ammo. I can't shoot anymore. So here, see, maybe that should be like uh, bigger than one, bigger than zero. So if I run out of ammo, I'm gonna add a sound here as well, cause that's cool. Uh, ooh, call I can type private audio clip ammo. Then in here, uh, sound manager dot instance dot play sound. Ammo. Okay, I, I don't have an ammo sound, but I can just make it all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Literally that. Yeah, yeah. Good one. Yeah, literally that. Yeah. What's my? This is my. Do I have a? Sure. I'm just gonna. This is my out of ammo sound. Yeah. So I, I can I, I can show you right. I'll show you. So I'm gonna make like. Okay, let's do a little bit three sounds over here, and then we're gonna add a game object over here, like sphere. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> That's in your face. Okay, over here. Let's put it over here, right? So, I'm gonna turn on trigger, I'm gonna make it a little bigger. There we go. So, this is like a pickup, right? So, you could actually create like a pickup script. So, I'm gonna do here, for example, I'll show you a little sexy way. Uh, pickup. Give it a second. Pick up. So what you can, what I often do as well, right? I I just have one class for pickups. That's it. Then I make like a, again a public enum, so like a list again enum uh, pickup type. Let's say ammo, health, HP, uh, stamina, whatever. Right? Doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, and then you can actually say okay, um, let's say let's do public. Int, I'm gonna call this amount. This is just example stuff uh, that I've been working on, yeah. Int amount, and then I can say here. Oh, ooh, Jesus. <laughs> that was the wrong one. On trigger, enter. If the other dot from pair tag is the player. In this case, I'm just gonna do really dirty though, but. Um, Okay, and then we can say get component in children would be my weapon. Add ammo amount like that. Really? Oh yeah, I knew that. That was a test. <laughs> That's a test. Yeah. So you can say okay. In this case, I should make a function here called weapon. Then I'm gonna add a public void add ammo. Uh, int amount here, and then I can say uh, ammo count plus s amount. There you go. That's it. So I don't want to now add ammo, right? So I can see here, right? I, I can make my comparison here. So if my if my player, if, if my player, <laughs> I'm going to use a private. Pickup type, type for 
like here. Okay. So if type equals pickup type dot ammo and ammo, right? Else, oh Jesus Christ, else if type equals pickup type dot HP, and then you have like player add HP, right? So this is a fast way to actually make like like a multi multi use pickup script. Yeah, as you've used fifty thousand dollars, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's, it's a little bit easy to read. So, so you can just check see if it's an ammo, add ammo. If it's, if it's health, add health. If it's stamina, add stamina. If it's cocaine, add cocaine. Whatever makes you happy, right? Uh, in this case, though, when you actually pick it up, you should probably destroy it as well. So, destroy it. Done. Add it to my sphere. Pick up. Like I say, okay. Oh. This should be a public action. Public. A second, like I said, okay. Do I want to HP or do I want to use stamina or ammo? Let's give ammo amount two. Then when I pick it up, I get added to more ammo. Sorry, oh, I get an error. That's always cool. 22. Ah, oh, two. Water done. Probably don't want to play the sound though. Holy shit, what happened there? All crossing is in update, probably. Uh, what am I doing? It's an enemy. Is it doing an enemy? No. Weapon, right? Yeah. Just come on. Don't touch that. There you go. Pew, 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 pew. I'm out of ammo over here. Then I come up forward over here. I can shoot again. Then you have ammo. Simple ammo. You can always, always do it with health as well, or men, or women, or fairy dust, cats. You know, it's very simple. And the enums are really nice as well, because when I change them over here, um, of course, you, uh, if, if you switch, it's a little bit easier. But you can, you can add one, you can delete one, you can, you know, whatever. It's really nice. It's just like a public list that you can access. Keep in mind that it's public, so everything can access this as well. So my enemy can also access my uh, list as well. So I can also say private uh, pickup type. See? So I can access that as well everywhere, but yeah. This is nice, a pretty sexy way of actually doing this. So. Oh, we did a lot actually. We made like half, half a game. <laughs> That's actually kind of cool. Good times. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm out of ammo. Cool. Um, I think it's time for, for beer to be honest. I can actually use one. Um, so, thanks for being here. Uh, that's fun. Um, I'll put this on, on my YouTube channel as well. So if you get lost, like what the fuck just happened, you can also have a look at it. And uh, I'd say have have a nice weekend, uh, people. Stay safe, stay healthy, um, and get some wine, get some beer, get some tequila shots in there, or whatever you guys do, or cocaine line, whatever. And <laughs> and uh, take care and uh, ciao. Thank you. <laughs>